In this video, I'll explain how to set up the wireless end zone camera hardware for football. First, let's look at an overview of the components. On the ground level, you'll have the hard case with your router, antenna, and network battery. The wireless camera head will go on top of your tower and have two batteries. If you have a 30-foot tower, make sure the four locking legs are fully extended and locked. If you have the 20-foot tower, make sure that the bottom stabilizer is down, not up, and that the legs are fully extended and locked via the mast knobs. For all towers, the center mast should be resting on the ground. This is very important. Next, mount the head to the top of the tower by rotating the head 360 degrees around the thread. Turn the Sony camera on and connect it to the battery. There are three types of smart camera head battery solutions. For our most up-to-date model, connect the USB extension cord from the camera's handle strap USB connector to the USB port on the battery, labeled camera in white. Next, connect the HDMI cable from the camera into the port labeled connect camera on the left side of the head. The camera should be facing the front Velcro battery. Do not connect the camera to the HDMI out port on the right. Then, connect the motor power cable, color-coded yellow, into the motor port on your battery. The zoom cable should already be plugged into the Sony camera, but if for some reason it isn't, go ahead and do this next. Connect the power cord to the router, and then plug it into the network battery. Do not connect the 15-volt charger cable from the network battery to the router. This will not provide enough power to the router, and it won't work. Conversely, never charge the network battery with the 24-volt router power cord, as this will damage the network battery and void its warranty. Next, plug the Wi-Fi antenna into the router port, color-coded with a black sticker. Your system will have one of two types of routers and antennas. You may have a black router with a white rectangular antenna, or you may have a white router and an antenna with a pair of rabbit ears. The first antenna is directional and provides a Wi-Fi signal up to 100 feet away as long as the iPad is within the path of the antenna's beam and there are no obvious obstructions, such as metal fences or large groups of people. The second antenna, with ears, creates a bubble of Wi-Fi, which still allows you to connect from about 100 feet away, again, assuming no obvious obstructions. If you have the antenna with ears, screw the ears into the antenna and position them at a 45 degree angle. For either antenna, use the Velcro strap to attach the antenna to the tower pole. Last, plug the end of the long blue Ethernet cable, the end that doesn't have a carabiner clip, to the router into the port color-coded with a blue sticker. You can now connect the other end of the long blue Ethernet cable to the port on the bottom of the head. Now, this is extremely important. You must use strain relief on the long blue Ethernet cord. It protects the Ethernet port in the bottom of the head from being damaged. Failure to use strain relief properly will almost certainly result in eventual damage to the port. After this is connected, give the cable a gentle tug to make sure all of the weight is on the clip and not on the port. Now, on the network battery, flip the AC power switch to on in order to supply power to the network. Finally, connect the computer power cable, color-coded in blue, to the battery port labeled power or computer in blue. You may also need to press the button on your smart camera head battery in order to make sure that it's delivering power. You should see four blue lights come on. It's important to plug the computer cord in last in order to avoid potential zoom problems. If you do it this way, then your zoom should work every time. Before raising the end zone tower, we recommend testing the camera's functionality to ensure that everything is working correctly. On your iPad, go to Settings and find the SportScope Wi-Fi. Connect using the password that can be found on the top of your router. It's also important to turn Bluetooth off here in the iPad settings. Next, open up the SportScope app and go to the Cameras page. The end zone camera should have a status of Ready. On the home page, you'll either see the most recent game or the demo game. Note that you cannot do anything from the demo game. 
In order to control the system, you must create a new game or use an existing created game. Go to Games and select New in order to start a new game. Put in your team's name as well as the opponent's name. Note that your system says End Zone, Ready, next to Select Cameras and is highlighted in white. This indicates that the camera is ready to go and selected. Once it is selected, you can start the game. Then bring the controls up on the right hand side to start the live feed of the end zone angle. Once an end zone live feed is established, test its functionality by placing your fingers on the screen to ensure pan, tilt, and zoom are all working. The joystick on the right controls pan and tilt. The plus minus controller on the left controls the zoom. If using the wireless end zone camera with a third party replay system, First, connect the strain relief clip from the 30-foot HDMI cable to the Ethernet strain relief clip. This is extremely important. You must use the strain relief. It protects the HDMI port in the side of the head from being damaged. Now connect the cable to the HDMI out port. Lastly, you may now connect the bottom end of the HDMI cable to your third-party replay system. If the tests were successful, you can now raise the end zone tower. Keep one hand in contact with the tower stages at all times. Make sure the Ethernet cord is secured to the pole with a large carabiner clip that is provided. Raise one section at a time and lock it in place before moving on to the next. Once the game is over, always scroll through all replay clips and tap the blue download arrows if there are any. Be sure to scroll through all the thumbnails, checking for plays that need to be downloaded. Do this before disconnecting any equipment, so that all plays are synced and you don't have to set up the equipment again later to obtain missing clips. Thank you for watching this instructional video and for choosing SportsCope for all of your end zone replay needs.